Alright guys, before this video starts, if you are happening to watch this on the day that I uploaded, January the 4th, 2019, today marks two years that I've been on YouTube for Couch Collectibles. So thank you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. In two years, we've reached over 113,000 subscribers, nearly 20 million views. It's mind blowing, I cannot thank you guys enough. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I really, really appreciate all the positive comments, the people who comment every day, the people who share these videos. Thank you so much. I really appreciate every single one of you. All right, guys, in today's video, we are looking at what can make your coin valuable. So we're going to be looking at some coin tips and what can make your coins worth money. All right, so number one on the list, if your coin has an error, that is a mint error, it takes place when the coin's being produced. It's basically like, a, you know, a baseball card misprint. So it's like a coin misprint in a way. If you guys are new to coin collecting, they are called error coins. So here's some images of some different types of error coins. Now I didn't put all the different types of errors because there are a lot of different ones out there. And I talk about those in my videos. So if you watch my videos, you will definitely know what to look for. Now this is something that is a bonded coin on a Jefferson nickel. This is a bonded coin on a Lincoln penny. And obviously you're not gonna find something like this. Well, 99.9% .9 chance you're probably not gonna find something like this in pocket change. But if we move on to a double die. Now now these are definitely ones that you can look for. This one is so doubled, it's the famous 1955 double die penny. So you can always look for those. I do have USB coin microscopes available on the website. Link is down in the comments below and in the description where you can put your coin underneath the microscope and see it up close to look for doubling. Now here's another example of doubling. This is taking place on a 1916 Buffalo nickel. So I show you all the different dates to look for doubling in my videos. So definitely always be looking out for that. Here is a double die reverse. So there's double die obverse and double die reverse, DDO and DDR. And what the difference is, is doubling on the obverse means the front of the coin and doubling on the reverse means the back of the coin. So uh, this is doubling on the back of a 2009 penny. And then this is doubling on a homestead quarter. So that is two different types of doubling on the back of a coin. Now here's a different type of error. This is called a die adjustment strike and you can see how it's all faded out along the rim of the coin mostly. So the date is even faded off and the word liberty and the phrase in God we trust is faded off as well. And then here's another die adjustment strike. This is on a Jefferson nickel. So you can barely make out the design on this coin and a lot of people get like damaged coins confused with these types of errors. So uh, this is definitely a die adjustment strike here. Now if we move on, here is a die capped error. This is on a Lincoln penny. Here's another die capped error on a Roosevelt dime. And then here's one of my favorites of all time. I definitely would love to find one of these coin roll hunting, searching for rare coins. Uh, definitely love double denominations. It's pretty much where you got one coin and another coin together essentially. So we see the design of the Lincoln penny as well as the design of the Roosevelt dime on this coin. Now here is another double denomination. We got the Susan B. Anthony $1 coin with the Washington quarter. So you can see the Washington quarter design there on the Susan B. Anthony coin. So always be on the lookout for those. Those are very noticeable errors. You wouldn't need a coin microscope for anything like that. And then here we got double strikes. You can look for these on really any type of coinage. And uh, it kind of speaks for itself. You see that the design of the coin has been double struck. And then here is gold coins. Of course, gold coins are always going to be valuable. And it does depend on gold and silver prices at the time of you know how valuable they are and of course it depends on what type of coin it is you know if it's a you know common silver quarter probably only going to be worth its silver milk value unless it's like an extremely high graded coin which we'll get into that here in a second but yeah silver and gold coins are always going to have value but if it's an extremely rare silver or gold coin it's going to be worth more than its silver value also here's an indent error this is on a coin from australia the three pence coin and then here is another indent error on the state quarter and of course you can always look for these off center errors on just about any type of coinage here it is on a penny 
here it is on a Eisenhower dollar. Now also what you want to look for are called repunched mint marks, RPMs. I talk about these in my videos all the time. You can see that the D mint mark has been repunched. And then here's a really good example of that. Uh, so if we get into this just for a second, you can see that the top one there says north and then we got east, south and west. And that means that the repunched mint mark impression is north. And then we can see that the repunched mint mark there on the east is on the east side of the other mint mark. And then same with the one on the bottom, it's south, and then we got one that is west. That kind of explains like the difference of like the placement of the repunched mint mark. Also for silver coins, just to give you guys a heads up, if you look here at this Jefferson nickel on the back, you can see that D mint mark at the top. That's how you're gonna know if any of your nickels are silver from 1942 to 1945. That's just for Jefferson nickels. Always look for that mint mark. There will be a P, D, or S mint mark above the building there on the reverse of the Jefferson nickel. And then of course, uh, I don't want to get too into detail. I've already done a silver coin video. I'll link it down in the comments below. Uh, from 1965 to 1970, for the Kennedy half dollars, those are 40% silver. 1964 and prior are 90% silver, so they're going to be worth a little bit more than 1965 to 1970. Just in terms of the silver value, of course, condition and all that stuff comes into effect when valuing a coin as well. Alright, so the next thing that's going to make a coin valuable is low mintage. What low mintage means is that they produce a low amount of those coins. So here is a 1950D. Now this is a Jefferson nickel that is a low mintage coin in comparison to other Jefferson nickel coins. They only produced a little over 2.6 million of these coins. So the 1950D is extremely hard to find when you're searching coin rolls from the bank. Now for the pennies, for an example, the 1909S VDB, VDB on the back of the coin, 1909S, and then you see the VDB there at the bottom on the back of the coin. That is an extremely rare coin. They've only produced over 484,000 of those coins. So not a lot of those are out there. If you do find one, you are extremely, extremely lucky, but uh, Everyone has a chance of finding these coins. They are low mintage and that goes for, you know, quarters and uh, dimes. I talk about low mintage coins in my videos as well. Show you exactly what to look for. As a matter of fact, on my coin mats on couchcollectibles.com, you can purchase those and uh, they are for searching through coins. They got like a mouse pad type material on them so they're soft and I show you the low mintage pennies on those coin mats. So definitely if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out. Couchcollectibles.com is always in the comments below as well. So just to recap real quick before we get to the third reason that your coin can be valuable is that the first one is error coins. And of course it always depends on the date that the error is on. It depends on the condition, if the coin is graded, and you know how low mintage it is. Because if it does have the low mintage, which is the second way that your coin could be valuable, there's definitely going to be a higher demand for that coin. And that will result in people wanting to pay more for those coins. All right, so the third reason is that your coin could be silver or gold, which we already talked about earlier, so I don't want to go too deep into that. Basically, you know, silver or gold coins, like I said earlier, they're going to be worth their face value, or unless it's like a coin that's in very good condition, if you've got a gold coin that's graded, it's going to sell probably for a little more than, you know, spot price for gold at that time that you sell it. And the fourth way that your coin could be valuable is depending on the grade and the condition of the coin. So tomorrow's video is going to be very important because it's going to be all about coin grading and how to sell your coins and that whole process and how that works and places to sell and I'm going to show you uh, all that stuff in tomorrow's video. So the graded condition is important. The condition of a coin is always going to affect its value. If someone claims a coin, it's going to devalue the coin which means it's going to be worth less. Now for the grade, uh, we're going to get more into coin grading tomorrow. I have done previous videos on that, but definitely come back tomorrow and watch tomorrow's video because I'll go farther in depth with that. Uh, coin grading, if you think you have a rare coin, an error coin, any valuable coin you think you have, you want to get it graded to see what the grade is because 
If it's a low grade, you know, it's gonna sell for less money than if it were a high grade. So it all depends. The coin grading scale, which we're gonna talk about tomorrow, uh, will, you know, they break it down in increments and uh, the coin grading scale does go from one to 70, one being the least, 70 being the best. And we'll get more into that tomorrow. So. Hopefully you guys get this, an error coin will make your coin valuable, and low mintage coins, the metal, silver, or gold, and the grade or the condition, and all that stuff is kind of combined together because an error coin value is going to be different based on the type of error it is, based on the uh, date of the coin it's on, and the condition of the coin as well. Alright guys, don't forget to smash that subscribe button in the middle, check out the videos to the left of me, and until tomorrow, I will see you all in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles and this is where I disappear.